Most of us know about the very popular American children's show, but Canada is also not far behind. The country has produced some brilliantly fun and educational series targeted towards children across the decade. They garnered positive thumbs up from the critics and the audience alike, and even bagged the prestigious international awards. Some of these shows influence generations in Canada, and maybe that's the reason why we are still talking about them in 2024. From animation to puppets, and even live action. Let's dive into the video to find out the characters and the shows that are much loved and raised quite a few generations in the country. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. I'm going to need to get the TV set for the news report, so hang on a minute. Oi, ninjas. What are you doing? Prank a Patrol, 2009. Pranking as kids used to be such a fun activity, and the fun would increase tenfold whenever we would find an unsuspecting victim for our supposedly not-so-evil plan. But what would happen when a team of ninjas are helping you execute these plans? Yes, this is what happened in the Canadian children's series, Prank Patrol, where the team helps the kids prank their family members or friends. A team of expert pranksters convinces the victims of the authenticity of their pranks, such as someone possessing real superpowers, intelligent gorillas, or alien landing. After the plan is successful, the whole truth is revealed to the victim. The show was hosted by Andy, who used to drive to a designated location with the ninjas at the beginning of every episode. The series also had a short animated segment called Recipe for a Prank, where a little girl and her brother pranked each other. After running for four seasons from 2005 to 2010, the show garnered a lot of fans throughout the country. You will be surprised to know that the popularity of this show is such that it has an Australian as well as a British version too. Look at some more books, Mr. Griffith. Oh, of course you can. It's always good to look at books anytime you want to. Mr. Dress Up, 1967. One of the longest running shows on this list is Mr. Dress Up. It started airing in 1967 and had 29 successful seasons till 1996. The show became an iconic presence in Canadian media. On weekday mornings, Mr. Dress Up would present a series of songs, arts, crafts, stories, and games for the children. He did all this with the help of his puppet friends, a child Casey and a dog Finnegan. The episodes were silent with only the puppeteer, Judith Lawrence, narrating them with his stories and song. He used to create arts and crafts and encourage the children watching the show to make art in their homes. New puppets were introduced after Lawrence retired, hence the new character. Due to the decades-long run as well as reruns of the show, several generations of Canadian children grew up watching Mr. Dress Up, making this show a pop culture icon in Canada. In 2022, a documentary titled Mr. Dress Up, The Magic of Make-Believe was released, which was based on the show. It won the People's Choice Award for documentaries. Franklin, 1997, an animated children's series. Franklin was made for preschool education. The show was based on the Franklin the Turtle books. This turtle lives in a small village and goes to school in Woodland. He has friends and they have educational adventures while playing, as well as learning around the world. Just like a small kid, Franklin has his favorite things to do as well as some fears. On one hand, he loves swimming, shoofy pie, and arts and crafts. Whereas on the other hand, he is afraid of thunderstorms and dark. To get through his fears, Franklin has his blue blanket and a blue plush dog, Sam, in all the six seasons of the show. The plot is mainly focused on Franklin Turtle. However, there are other characters too, including his parents, friends, and extended family. The show successfully ran for seven years, and a CGI series called Franklin and Friends premiered in 2011. Sesame Park, 1980. You might have heard of Sesame Street, but are you aware of Sesame Park? The latter is the Canadian version of the former series. The show was titled Sesame Street Canada, but was later renamed Sesame Park. The Muppet characters included Basil the Bear, Doty the Bush Pilot, and Louis the Otter. Although in the following years, new characters were added to the show. Starting from 1972, Sesame Park ended in 2001 and had a run of five seasons. Even though the show was a hit, it was canceled for some reason that was not disclosed. The Raccoons, 1985. The Raccoons is an animated series that taught the children some really important lessons with the help of the humanoid animal characters. The story follows the raccoons named Ralph and Melissa, a married couple, and their friend and roommate, Bert. There is an antagonist named Cyril Sneer, an aardvark, who is hell-bent on destroying the forest for his greed and personal wealth. Whereas the raccoons try to save their forest with everything they can, but they were not alone in their mission, as their other forest friends also helped them in standing against Cyril. The friends included Schaefer, a sheepdog, Cyril's son Cedric, and his girlfriend Sophia. Their fight for the forest turned out to be fruitful later in the series, 
When Cyril started changing and had a sympathetic approach towards the forest, in turn, he became more responsible towards his business practices. Although the main focus of the raccoons was environmentalism, they also portrayed humor, action, and romance in an uncomplicated manner, keeping in mind their younger audience. Cyber 6, 1999 TV series. Cyber 6 is an Argentine comic turned into an animated television series. But how is it in the list of Canadian shows? Well, it was produced in Canada and animated in Japan. This makes this show a collaborative project of three countries. Therefore, the impact must be bigger. Since the show was made for children, the darker plots from the comics were toned down to make it age appropriate. The story revolves around a teacher named Adrian Seidelman, who teaches during the day and is a female gynoid named Cyber 6 by night. As Cyber 6, she protects the town of Meridiana by fighting the machinations of her own creator, Dr. Von Richter, and his clone son, Jose. She is not alone in the fight, as her aide is a fellow creation named Data-7, who is in the form of a Black Panther. The show aired in 1999 and had only one season, but it still managed to bag several prestigious awards, including the categories Best Animation Production and Best Overall Sound of an Animated Production. He was acting weird because he was mad. Uh -huh. What would you do then? Um... Friendly Giant, 1958. As the title of this series suggests, Friendly Giant is a children's series about a giant who lives in his huge castle. He had his puppet friends Rusty, a rooster, and Jerome, a giraffe. The show was in a puppet format and was famous for its repetitive but interesting opening sequence. The episodes were 15 minutes long and usually featured conversations among the giant, Rusty, and Jerome in the castle. This was followed by a musical performance or a story. Friendly Giant is the longest running show on this list, with over 3,000 episodes produced throughout its run of 27 years. It became a staple show for many people and generations. Whimsy's House, 1995. Puppet shows have always been popular among children, and no matter how many of them were produced, they all ran successfully on television. So the next show on the list is Whimsy's House. The show was targeted towards preschool kids and follows the story of a little monster girl, Whimsy, and her family, which includes her parents, grandma, and baby brother. Every episode followed the same format where her friends would come to her house and play together. This resulted in some or the other problem. The solution and the moral of the episodes would come in the form of two songs. This show had the same eight characters throughout its run of two seasons, consisting of 112 episodes. Whimsy's house also faced some legal issues because of its puppetry style, being similar to the American show Sesame Street. However, it was later resolved between the two production companies. Nevertheless, this show had a good run and was thoroughly enjoyed by the kid. Alone? Alone? Reboot, 1994. Did you know that there is an animated show that follows the story of characters who are actually based out of a computer program? Yes, pretty fascinating, right? So there is this guardian named Bob, whose companions are Enzo and Dot Matrix. They reside within the world of the mainframe in a computer system and make sure it is safe from the viruses called Megabyte and Hexadecimal. Most of the episodes have a similar storyline, where the user downloads a game and electrical violet cubes enter the city. This turns some residents in the mainframe city into non-player characters, and they have to play against the user in this new game. Reboot was such a unique children's show that despite having recurring plots, it ran for four seasons from 1994 to 2001. Its impact was such that a live-action CGI animated series was announced in 2015 and premiered on Netflix. I was quite the terror on the soccer pitch in my day, you know. Come on, I'll show you a few moves. Jacob Tutu, 2003. Based on the books of the same name, Jacob Tutu is a show that focuses on a boy named Jacob who has moved from England to Montreal with his family. Jacob is the youngest of five siblings and has always faced difficulty in getting himself heard in his large family. Hence, he got the nickname Tutu because of the habit of repeating everything twice in his house. He is mostly left out of the activities of his elder sibling and his naivety makes him a target for their pranks. The books and the show are actually based on the life of the writer, Mordecai Richler. He has named the characters in Jacob's family after his own. The character of Jacob's father, Morty, is loosely based on Richler himself. Crazy Quilt, 1997. Crazy Quilt is an art and craft show that aired in 1997. In every episode, a quilt is used to take the viewers on an art and craft adventure. The hosts, Maggie and Jackson, used to teach kids how to make different crafts. When the woman, Maggie, and the raccoon, Jackson, used to make crafts, they would also tell different stories to the viewers. The show was aired in 1997 and ran till 1999, but its reruns used to air on television even till 2011. The Elephant Show, 1984. Sharon, Lois, and Bram 
are a singing trio that are accompanied by an elephant who doesn't speak but its emotions are conveyed by a tuba. Every episode features the four of them solving the problems of children with their song. They used to travel to different places in every episode and would solve children's queries, teaching the viewers a lesson too. The show occasionally included a social lesson as well like a pro-UNICEF discussion. The trio appeared in advertisements as well, encouraging the parents to get their children vaccinated against mumps, polio, and rubella. From the second season onward, the show was renamed as Sharon, Lois, and Bram's Elephant Show. This show was among the top three series on the United States Nickelodeon and enjoyed top ratings in Canada for a long time. In 1992, the Elephant Show beat Sesame Street to become ranked two among the shows for preschool. Gotta go. They want me to start training today. By the way, I can't believe you actually eat at 16, 2004. As the title goes by, 16 is an animated show about teenagers for teenagers. Unlike the other shows on this list, this is based on serious themes and was targeted towards a little older audience. The themes of personal growth, self-discovery, friendship, and the challenges faced by a teenager are focused in this show. Instead of being based in a high school, 16 takes place in a shopping mall, where six 16-year-olds are working part-time jobs at different stores in that mall. The group hangs out in the mall's food court and discusses relationship, friendship, crushes, teenage issues, jobs, and schools, along with providing each other support and sometimes banter. Over the period of 2004 to 2010, 16 had aired for four seasons. The show had a huge impact on its audience and garnered millions of views on television, as well as have some prestigious awards to its name. Surprise! It's Edible Incredible 2004, a children's game show about food. Yep, sounds really fun, but is it? The hosts used to give a list of ingredients to the contestants, and they had to find all of them in a store within a limited time. They earn a point if all the listed ingredients are correct. Still sound fun? Now comes the tough part. In the next round, contestants are ordered to eat the food they dislike and continue searching for the remaining items on their list. The third and final round was when a dish was demonstrated and the contestants had to prepare them. Finally, a chef tasted them blindly and rated the dishes. Whoever won received a prize which included a trip to two to three places. A total of 52 episodes of the show aired on television from 2000 to 2008, and they definitely were an enjoyable watch. Fred Pinner's Play, 1985 The entertainer and musician Fred Pinner was in a fictionalized version of himself in this children's musical show titled Fred Pinner's Play. This show had everything from puppets to musical numbers and even guest star. Pinner used to teach the children different subjects with the help of his music and acoustic guitar that played throughout. The subject also included French, which is one of the official languages of Canada. The impact of this series was such that not only did it receive positive reviews from critics, but also won several awards including the Juno Award and Gemini Award. It had an incredibly successful run from 1985 to 1997. With 900 episodes being produced, Fred Pinner became a household name and his music had a significant impact. He admitted that when the show ended, even he felt a little lost despite performing in concerts. Under the Umbrella Tree, 1987, four different characters of different species live in the same house under one roof, with an umbrella tree inside the house. This is how the title, Under the Umbrella Tree, was derived for this children's series. The main characters are Holly, a human, Iggy, an iguana, Jacob, a blue jay, and Gloria, a gopher. Every episode of this series is focused on different themes such as singing, sports, dancing, holiday, exercise, and other activity. Along with these fun activities are hidden valuable life lessons for children, like being considerate and keeping promises. A total of 280 episodes were produced for this series between 1987 to 1993. This quartet became so famous and loved that in 2020 the cast had a reunion to make a video titled The Umbrella Tree, The Mask Special, after almost 30 years since the last episode premiered on television. The Adventures of Dudley the Dragon 1993 Dudley the Dragon woke up in a new world after centuries of hibernation. He is confused about this world and luckily finds two 10-year-old humans, Matt and Sally, to help him adjust to the changes around him. The kids guide Dudley and take him through this modern world. During this journey, the trio also learn some valuable lessons about environmentalism, pro-social value, and friendship. Later on, they are joined by other kids as well called Julia, Terry, Laura, and McKee. The Adventures of Dudley the Dragon is a live action show where the kids are portrayed as they are. Dudley is played by a costumed actor and the recurring characters are in the form of puppets. From 1993 to 1997, the show had a good run of five seasons. Even after all these years, Dudley was still broadcast on US television as of 2023. Polka Dot Door 1971 
Polka Dot Door is an educational series that aired from 1971 to 1993. It had a great run for 22 seasons during this period. Each week had a set of different themed episodes, such as Tuesdays, where Dress Up Day, where the hosts used different costumes and explored the theme. With creativity and fun, viewers were educated on various themes in all episodes. The main element of the show was a mythical creature, Pokeroo, which was a combination of a polka-dotted kangaroo who was a female. There was also a special polka dot door, and on Finding Out Day, which was every Friday. The camera focused on one of the dots that revealed a short educational film. The series was named the groundbreaking children's education series, and was also considered to have impacted young Canadian audiences, changing the profile of the Canadian television industry internationally. The Littlest Hobo, 1979 The Littlest Hobo is a series about an ownerless dog, based on the 1959 movie of the same name. This series follows an intelligent German Shepherd Stray, who is a wanderer. He goes from town to town and helps people in need. Despite their attempts to adopt them after taking his help, Hobo always ventured on his own, wandering without any owner. The dog has no name and is referred to as Hobo by people. Some gave him temporary names which were not used as he went to a new place. His origins and purpose are also never explained throughout the series. The Littlest Hobo first aired from 1963 to 1965. Due to its popularity, it was revived for another run from 1979 to 1985, with six new seasons. Street Sense, 1989 to 2006. In a news magazine style, Street Sense is a series that was targeted towards teenagers to educate them about consumer and media awareness. The show was so popular and influential that it bagged an International Emmy Award for Best Youth Programming or Series. The format of the show was such that there were three hosts, one sneaky salesman, and three pigs and hedgehog. The salesman named Ken used to work at an evil corporation that sold inferior products at a higher price. He used to sell the company's foul products to the hosts, which in turn used to get busted. The show used to run without any commercial breaks because the creators didn't want advertising revenue for a show that they had created to spread awareness of advertising scams and foul products. The show had 17 seasons from 1989 to 2006 and was canceled due to the decline in the viewership of the target audience. Marvelous Verdict After exploring these 20 amazing shows, we are back from the nostalgia trip. Canadian or not, most of us have come across at least one of these shows in some way or the other. This kept me wondering how the films and series hold a huge power to change our lives. With the right type of content consumption, children can become aware at a young age. Their moral values, sympathy towards the world, quick wit, and smart thinking are usually developed by the kind of shows they are exposed to. It is commendable how the makers of all these shows came up with innovative ideas to implement this smart learning method among different generations of kids. Have you seen any of these shows? Do let us know which was your favorite show growing up. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone!